percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hours Crypto. Let's get right into today's video. It, it is a late upload, but I'm telling you, this is going to be a very, very interesting episode because you guys know we have been covering Elon Musk, Peter Thiel within the last week. And what are the odds that Peter Thiel himself is and was on the Joe Rogan podcast? So I did take a listen to it. And I want to show you a little snippet of it. I'll put the full podcast in the link in the description down below. You guys could check it out. It's great to like just sit there and listen to a you know billionaire that was a part of the PayPal mafia. That, you know we all covered. You know it, it, it's crazy. It's really nice to sit there and listen to the way they think, the way they speak as well. Uh, because just the, because they have money doesn't mean they're the best speakers. And Peter Thiel is actually a really good example of that. But without further ado, let's get right into today's episode. We're going to go over why XRP is going to flip Bitcoin 100% because they came in here with an objective to create a dent in the universe and pretty much suck out and free up the trillions that are sitting idle within uh, the banking sector. And then we're going to get into cyber attacks that are being pretty much... Give, they're giving us little hints about these cyber attacks that are coming and why I believe when crypto really, really takes off, something dramatic is going to happen. I'll share that with you in a moment. But take a listen to what Peter Thiel says here. Tech stagnation is that when something does happen, we don't even know how to process it. So, you know, I think I think Bitcoin was a I mean, it was a big invention. We can debate whether it was good or bad, but it was a pretty big deal. And it was systematically underestimated for at least, you know, the first 10, 11 years. You know, you could, you could trade it. It went up smoothly for 10, 11 years. It didn't get repriced all at once because we're in a world where nothing big ever happens. And, um, and so we, we have no way of processing it when something pretty big happens. The Internet was pretty big in 99. Bitcoin was moderately big. The Internet was really big. Bitcoin was moderately big. And I'd say... Um, passing the Turing test is really big. It's on the same scale as the internet. And I'd say um, passing the Turing test is really big. It's on the same scale as the internet. Very important the way he emphasizes, we don't know how to process it. And you know, you guys hear me say that all the time about our minds have not lived anything like that. So when it does happen, we're gonna be in a state of shock. People are gonna get blindsided and it's gonna be hard for people to process. And then he referenced this as being much, much bigger than the internet. And the timing couldn't have been better because you guys know my little pep talk yesterday. I mean, I gave you guys some very reasonable points where you should have no doubt in your investment whatsoever because we know exactly what we hold and we know exactly what kind of era we're going into. And the fact that Peter Thiel said that, it's truly remarkable. Go ahead and smash that like button. If you know, you know. Um, and you know, it's, they underestimated Bitcoin, but at the end of the day, you should be asking yourself, like, where is the value, right? Like who is using Bitcoin? Who is using these digital assets is the most important question that you should be asking yourself. So going back to a snapshot back from October 27th of 2013, you see Bitcoin and XRP, right? Bitcoin. $196 to $70,000. But did it solve any problems on the way up? Yes, it did in a way of maybe giving more options in terms of freedom, you could call it, right? But at the end of the day, Bitcoin doesn't really solve anything. It has created itself as a store of value, gold 2.0, I respect that. But where is the use case, right? It's all just speculative buyers buying it and hoping it goes up. What is the driver value for Bitcoin? Think about it. And then you ask yourself, what is the driver value for XRP? And that is its utility to perform these exotic on and off uh, ramps within these exotic corridors, okay? Just, I'm not gonna get in depth about XRP's utility. 
But just ask yourself, right? It went from a dollar to $70,000 without actually solving anything in this world and just being a speculative bubble, you could call it. I own Bitcoin, I'm pro Bitcoin, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, in the long run, Bitcoin will collapse. Okay, but in my opinion, we'll see 100K, 200K, 300K, 400K. And I know some of you guys don't see that. That's totally fine. Uh, but we are about to see the floodgates open. And you guys might be asking yourselves, like, why are you so bullish right now? Because it's in their timelines, within their agenda. And this is the turning point. Like, they are ready to do so. They're about to do the transition. And they're going to slowly phase this out. And like this snapshot just speaks volumes, right? Just like understanding what you're holding and how long it's been here for. And the, I'm very bullish that the fact that the price of XRP has remained where it has since the inception and the adoption of XRP. It's very, very bullish for the whole ecosystem for the XRP ledger and XRP. But take a listen. Uh, this is a video from the World Economic Forum. Some of you guys may have seen it. Uh, Mr. Hergens talking about cyber warfare and cyber attacks. Uh, and we have articles being released as we speak. War on cyber front. Iran may target Israel with cyber attacks. And then we have the cyber attack hits Mono Bank, Ukraine's largest direct bank. And then we even had Windows was they confirmed that they had a cyber attack and they're working on a release to fix this by September 3rd. And why are we covering this? Well, let's listen to what he has to say first and I'll go into depth. First, it's around geopolitics. The most striking finding that we found is that 93% of cyber leaders and 86% of cyber business leaders believe that the geopolitical instability makes a catastrophic cyber event likely in the next two years. This far exceeds anything that we've seen in previous surveys. Now, the concern goes beyond politically motivated cyber attacks. And I'm sure Prime Minister Rahm will be able to give us more information on that uh, later on and how these can be dealt with. And we see with the increasing digitalization in the world, this as well increases the interconnections that we have across various services. It also makes it more difficult to find the experts that we need to address the cyber challenges that are in front of us. When this ecosystem completely blows up and they're predicting for a cyber attack within two years, 2025, 2026, in my opinion, when, when this ecosystem blows up and I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen a lot sooner than you think. Within two years, this thing is going to be drastically higher than $2 trillion. And if you're sitting there and you're doubting me and you just heard me say that, I'm going to be living rent-free for the, in your head for the rest of your life. And that's a fact. But within the next two years, this ecosystem is going to blow up. And the faster this blows up, the faster and more aggressive these cyber attacks are going to be on exchanges right and that is why it's very important for you guys to have your assets on a cold storage and not leave it on exchanges maybe leave a little bit on an exchange where you're willing to sell but even then if when crypto takes off i am i'll say this right now and i want your comments and your thoughts down below in my opinion i am 90 percent sure that one crypto exchange is going to get majorly hacked and I'm not trying to spread any kind of FUD, but it is just a given when this ecosystem blows up to a multi-trillion dollar ecosystem, right? Just when it passes 10 trillion, 11 trillion, 15 trillion, 20 trillion, uh, there's gonna be a lot of, lot of wealth that's gonna be created. And I, I have this feeling that one exchange, I don't know what it is, it could be a small one, it could be a big reputable one, right? Is gonna get hit with a cyber attack where everything might, get drained or like we we got to be prepared and we need to expect the unexpected right so that is why if you haven't put your assets on a cold storage i highly suggest it and what i'm using is the Descent wallet the link is in the description down below you get two 130 dollars off a complete steal the link is in the description down below and make sure you have the 24 hours crypto exclusive discount page on it and 
today's Saturday, so Sunday, Sunday 12 midnight is when this will be off. So don't wait until something bad happens and then you're rushing to get a ledger or a decent wallet or a treasure, whatever you guys prefer. But if you guys are interested in this, always have more than one. I cannot stress that enough. And for the ones that already got this, let me know in the comments down below if you guys set it up nice, how it was. Um, I wanna know how your onboarding was, but they're coming out and telling you this and I wouldn't be surprised if they honestly took individual's wealth or they kind of planned something where they hack an exchange and completely liquidated. I know it sounds crazy, but you gotta be prepared for this. They're gonna, exchanges are gonna get targeted. There's gonna be massive wealth being created. And I know it's hard for some individuals to understand, but just remember what Peter Thiel said. Like, listen to these, if you don't believe me, listen to these billionaires. I've been telling you since day one. We don't know how to process it because we haven't lived anything like this before. So just think outside the box, be visionaries. You gotta be crazy. You gotta be crazy, okay? If you're not crazy, then you're not doing it right. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It's all right in front of us. I'm not trying to create any kind of FUD. I want you guys to know that right now. I hold some on exchanges. I hold some on my Dissound wallet. But just know, safety is key. And the last thing you want is not be able to have access to your assets when there is no electricity, there is internet's completely wiped out because that time is coming. And again, it's not fun. It is not fun. We are going through a phase in this whole world. It's transitioning into a technological war warfare, you could call it, right? Um, so it's gonna get really crazy and I just cannot wait to see what's gonna happen in the near future. A lot of people are gonna get blindsided and congratulations to every single one of you guys that are tuning in, educating yourselves and understanding what you hold because in a moment, there's gonna be a huge gap in wealth. With the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.